you don't know my backstory, before I started RVing, I owned a dirt racetrack. Well, hold on, let me back up before that. I grew up at a racetrack since I was four years old. My dad raced, my brothers raced, it was a whole family event every Saturday night at our local racetrack. So with being a racer at heart, and you happen to be RVing through your hometown when the community fair is having redneck truck races, and your brother asks you, do you want to race the old dump truck in the races? Of course the answer is going to be, sign me up. Now I knew getting this truck ready for the races was not going to be easy. I last used this truck in 2010 when I was renovating the racetrack. Something broke on it. I didn't have time to troubleshoot it, working 100 hours a week to get the racetrack back open. I parked it and it sat there ever since. Now 11 years later, we pulled this truck out of the weeds, we need to see if it's going to run and drive to know if it's worth it to even get it ready for the races. If you normally watch our channel, you know we make educational videos for our beers and share our adventures of findings along the way. This is not an RVing video, but it's definitely a crazy race you're going to want to check out. This might give you some insight on what makes me tick, why I like tinkering with the RV, fixing things as they come up, and driving into disasters doing hurricane relief work. The race is about to begin. Let me take you along for the ride. This is my heat race where I had to get first or second place to advance on to the feature race. If you see him come around to the white flag, every lap in this race is pretty much the same. The truck wouldn't turn, I hit the wall multiple times, I was trying to turn and cranking the wheel a lot in this truck. Eventually got to the point, I just hung on for dear life, hit the wall, had to back up and try over again. With this truck having no power steering, big steering wheel, being a stick shift, only having front brakes, I knew from the get-go in this race, I was not gonna be a winning truck like I thought I was before we got out there. Now we're on to the last chance qualifier race where I had to finish first to move on to the feature. As you can see, starting in the back was gonna be a big challenge from the get-go. I did get the truck to turn a lot better. My brother and I worked on the truck in the pits. I changed some tires around, put a bigger tire on the left front, try to get the front end to grab a little better. I put a bald tire on the left rear so I'd have less traction on the left rear tire. The right side would hopefully make the truck turn and go around to the corners and turn left a little bit better. That helped a lot. It was still sliding in the corners a little bit. I was able to pass a couple trucks when they were spinning around. In this truck, he happened to help me out. I rather hit him versus hit the wall to keep going straight. But it was still muddy and the truck was all over the place. I couldn't get much traction. Going in the corner, if someone bumped me, and pushed me a little bit too fast, or I would slide through the mud, end up in the wall one more time. I was up to second at one point, just because other drivers messed up. But with my own truck messing up, I ended up back in the back once again. Another obstacle of the race is trying to be able to see the truck without a black smoke because our friend Brad, he grew up with my brother Denny and he's always around messing with cars and tinkering around. So us being in the same race together seems just like racing vehicles in the backyard like when I was a kid. But his smoke screen he was putting off was really hard to see through. The crowd had a hard time seeing the race. As it got darker out, it made it even more challenging to race around the track. In the midst of all the chaos, the dust and the smoke, I ended up behind this one truck. I didn't know his hood was up or he couldn't see. And he ended up running into a tire. By the time he was slowing down, I realized I was catching him. I couldn't stop. I couldn't turn and get out of the way. All I could do was run into the back of him. At this point, they threw a red flag so the race would stop. They could sort things back out in the track. So I slowly moved around the guy. You see how many times to crank on the wheel to try to turn in a little spot. Required a lot of arm strength with no power steering to move this truck. So I'm coming around and you see Brad's going to be on the upside of me pretty soon and his hood is flopping off from running to the back of me earlier in the race. I seen it start flopping off and says, oh, I better stop before I run this over and damage something on my truck. They pull his pieces off, they throw them on the infield. You'll see pieces of all these trucks are gathering around the infield of all the broken parts and pieces. When we restarted the race after the red flag, I was in third. I said, well, I only have two spots to go to get to the front. I have a chance at this. I was on the inside of Brad coming down the front stretch. Brad turned a little quicker than I did. I ended up hitting a tire. I got hooked on Brad going down the back stretch. Coming down to the next turn, I got a kept in the gas, flipped him over, but I let out the gas and stopped because I didn't want to hurt anyone else out there on the track. This guy behind me, he didn't see anyone to stop. He plowed on me wide open. His truck started on fire. 
Brad was hooked on me in the front, I was stuck in the metal, I could see flames on my rear view mirror. The fire department came out to put the flames out, the payloader came out to move Brad off of me, they did a really good job of quickly getting Brad free so he can drive out of the way. I was able to get out of harm's way and drive away from the fire. This is my last time on the track for the Constellation Race because I didn't make it into the feature. So this is only for fun. As you see, it's a little bit dark outside now with the sun going down. It's even darker coming into Brad's black cloud of smoke going down the track. This is a fun race for me. It's a little bit drier. I didn't smash on a wall every time. I only got spun out into one corner. I was able to make some laps and get some adrenaline flowing. Ten days ago, when I started working on this truck, I needed a lot of work. The shifter was locked up. It didn't have any spark. didn't have a fuel tank that worked. So we went through all that. I freed up the shifter so we can ship and get some gears going. I had to tear apart the distributor to get some spark. This truck is a lot different than newer vehicles with electronic ignition. We just turn the key and away it goes. But they're really simple to work on if you're used to working on these things like I am. We got some fuel and spark, drove around the backyard. The next challenge was brakes. And those were quite the challenge. We only got it down to the front two brakes working before the race after three days of work into the brake system. Kept blowing brake lines, having to fix things. And then eventually we got it so I could stop safely enough so I can get out there on the racetrack. After all the work I put in this truck, I was glad to get out there, make some laps, and finish the race safely, and not get rolled over like some of these trucks did. These things are big and heavy, do not maneuver like race cars I'm used to driving. Last night was a redneck truck race. We're gonna look at the truck here before we unload and assess the damage. It was a pretty crazy race. It's a good thing I wasn't in the last race. Those guys were super crazy. Way too many trucks. Went way too fast. With a lot of people who did not care what got smashed up out there. So as you see in the front, uh, there's quite a bit of damage up there. I'm not sure how this blinker ended up underneath the hood, but it did. So the radiator is still holding water, so it wasn't smashed. This side's got a lot of dents on it. Mostly from bouncing off the of tires around the track. Uh, we got a flat tire back on this side. We got a big old slice down in here and just some dents on the back lost a mud flap i had a one truck that smashed into me when i was stopped and he started on fire it's a good thing that was behind me so no issues on my end for that this side does look pretty good except for this right front tire the truck would not turn at all in the corner especially when it had any bit of mud so i kept bouncing off the wall you can see the concrete dust on the tire that's that white stuff and the front up here bouncing off the concrete so the axle is bent and the leaf spring is broken right there. You can see that's supposed to be connected. So if this truck's going to race again, it needs a lot of work, especially to get some brakes working a little bit better. Speaking of brakes, I lost brakes in the last lap, though there's no brakes in the truck. We loaded it without brakes. That worked okay. I'm going to unload it. You can see there's plenty of grass behind me. That way when it rolls backwards, I have a lot of room to get it stopped by using the clutch and the shifter to put it into a gear to get it slowed down. Then I'm going to pull it into the garage, I'm going to put windows back in it, park it in the backyard, take out the important things we don't want left outside in the weather. The truck's going to sit there at least till next year if we're going to race it again, or it's going to be a parked truck for a future vehicle, a redneck race truck, or whatever it might be. It's hard to throw away valuable pieces that this truck has. And there it sits, exact same spot it was 10 days ago before the redneck truck race. It'll be there till next year if we race it again, or it'll be a parts truck for another adventure down the road. I hadn't been behind the wheel in 12 years. That was fun. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching our adventure.